Chapter 10. When the excitement of Eid is over, the boredom of everyday life comes flooding back. Needless to say, distractions of any sort are welcome in a refugee camp. TV crew at the marketplace, let's go. Come on, Hassan. Here, everyone's very strange. Here, one very strange thing about living in a refugee camp, sometimes white people come around with cameras to do reporting on what it is like to live here. I guess they show these stories on TV back in England or Australia or America or wherever the reporter is from. Whenever we heard there was a reporter in town, we'd run to go watch. Why? Well, it was something to do for one thing. For another thing, sometimes the reporters or the camera people would give us candy. Score. Uh, I understood enough English now, so I could kind of understand what these reporters were saying. I'm here in Dadaab, a refugee camp in the middle of Kenya in Africa. Dadaab opened in 1992 as a temporary refugee for some Somalians uh, feeling the civil war in their country. However, 10 years later, the Dadaab seems far from temporary as the unrest in Somalia shows no signs of slowing. The reporter would go on and on and talk about the lack of water, the lack of food, the poor housing, and so on. Then the camera crews would pack up their stuff, sorry kids, we're all out of candy, and get back in their fancy cars and drive off in a cloud of dust. I wondered if anyone ever watched these shows back in England or Australia or America, and if people did watch them, why wasn't anyone helping us? Sometimes reporters or the United Nations even came to our school to check up on how things were running. You could always tell when the UN was coming because the teachers brought in extra chairs and desks to make it look like everyone had some place to sit. This got all the kids talking. Gal Kadon. Then the teachers confirmed it. Ooh. Tomorrow, I want your clothes to be spotless. If I see so much as a speck of dirt on your trousers, you will get it, understand? The next day, we recited our lessons very carefully. No one dared to misbehave during class, even though it would have been really funny to see our teachers' faces if we did. On this particular visit, a white lady got up to talk to us during English class. Hello, pupils. My name is Susanna Martinez, and I am a social worker with the United Nations. I came all the way from Spain to work with the kids here in Dadaab. You are all strong, resilient children, and I see so much potential in this room. I hope you'll keep up with your studies. If you have any problems at home or at school, you can always talk to a UN officer. We are here to help. Sounds like she took a page from Michael's Motivation 101 speech. As we were getting ready to go, Michael pulled me aside. Omar, stay after class for a second, would you? Hmm. As Mrs. Martinez, uh, this is Omar, the student I was telling you about. Yes, Omar, it's a pleasure to meet you. Michael has told me about your family situation. He says you're a hard worker and that you'd like to be a social worker with the United Nations when you grow up. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. My dreams seem kind of silly now. Here was an actual social worker with the UN, but she had clean clothes and nice shoes. I felt extra shabby next to her. It's hard enough keeping up with your studies as a refugee. I imagine it must be even harder for you without parents and with a younger brother to support. If you ever need anything at all, I am here to help. I want to be a friend to you if you need it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. 
Michael is going to keep me updated on your work at school. And who knows, maybe we will be co-workers someday. What was that about? Oh, you know, another motivational one-on-one talk. She seemed nice and like she really meant what she said. But I also knew the UN workers lived in a big compound with big walls to protect them and electricity and running water. I knew they drove around the camps in big fancy cars. What did she really know about being a refugee? School went on. I joined the debate team. That was fun because we got to debate against each other, middle schools in the Dab, in the other camps. Mostly we debated things like the human rights of the refugee and why education is important for boys and girls. Really, it was just a way to practice our English. Life takes on a routine and day after day, everything stayed the same. Go to school, care for Hassan, do my chores, weeks and months passed. Normal, boring, waiting, waiting. I've learned that the biggest surprises in life can come when you least expect them, which is why I was completely unprepared for what would happen next. Stay tuned.